Welcome to Beyond the Beers. Men breaking the stereotype through conversation. We men love a good yarn, some banter, even better over a beer or ten. Sadly for many men, it never goes deeper than that. This show is a place for men to go beyond the surface level conversation, a chance to learn, listen, laugh and grow. I'm your host Mike Campbell, man coach and author of Amazon bestseller for men's health, Unleash Your Alpha. Let's break stereotypes through conversation. Let's go beyond the beers. Hi, I'm your host Mike Campbell and today I have with me Mr. Scott Tweedy. Scott is a TV host and professional prankster, basically. You rocked up to a prank photo shoot. I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> now, you're gonna learn a lot more about Scott in a later episode when I interview him, but today, we're gonna turn the tables and Scott's gonna interview me for our first episode. So Scott, let's get into the show. Over to you, mate. You're a brave man, Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell and I, we met on a 12-day charity cycle for Project Futures, which is all about raising awareness to end human trafficking and human slavery, both in Cambodia and here in Australia. And it was an amazing experience for me to actually have 12 days of meeting people like you as well. And I wonder if you're nervous today that I'm actually running this interview, are you? I'm probably more nervous than getting on that bike, actually, yeah. You should be. You should be. I've got some ripper questions lined up. Well, Mike, let's have a sip of beer and get into it. Cool. What made you become a man coach? And why did you want, and do you think it was so important for men to have more conversations? Um, so, for me, I suppose the journey to being a, a man coach um, was quite a long one. It was basically 30 years or so of my life, right? Um, I started as a personal trainer about 12 or 13 years ago, and by nature I'm very curious and very observant. So when I started working with people, and mostly it was men, um, I soon realized there was so much more than the physical stuff. Um, and I soon realized really that it was, a lot of it was mental. And so being curious, I kind of got into that. I started educating myself and upskilling and, and diving into the things that helped my clients. Then I started to look at it and I figured out why, why the same things coming up all the time? The same issues, the same problems. And for me, it kind of boiled down to a couple of things. One, physically we weren't really where we wanted to be and that kind of spread to any different guide regardless of where he was. There was always something there we weren't happy about and then mentally we weren't kind of where we wanted to be either. And I was seeing it in myself and my friends and my clients, this general kind of just meh, like, you know, life's hard, work's hard and and this acceptance of mediocrity, basically. And it really spurred me to question it and dive into it. So I did. I started, um, I was working on myself a lot, and I started looking into what is it about men? And that's when I started researching, talking to psychiatrists and psychologists and all this stuff. I kind of went down the rabbit hole, and uh, I found that, yeah, we've, I think we've just kind of forgotten how to be men and we just don't quite know. And this journey into manhood from a boy is quite grey. We get told to man up, to harden up, to, to be a man. And it's such a narrow picture. We basically get told to push our emotional side away and keep things in. So it really lit a passion in me that, that I wanted to address. Mike, you obviously enjoy talking about conversations like this. So what topics don't you enjoy talking about? What makes you a little bit uncomfortable? Um, I think loads of things do, right? One of the things that I've, I suppose, worked on is uh, and leaning into and embracing those things. So I'll still do them, whatever they may be. So probably um, more frequently they used to be more emotional ones in relationships, say. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm more willing to to have a crack at it, even though I might feel uncomfortable. Um, and one of the things for me that I suppose uh, really helped with that was realizing that when we feel uncomfortable and we worry about oh, having that conversation, we build it up in our minds and it's never really that bad. And we're kind of thinking about worst case scenario but we actually don't think about the worst case scenario because if we did, it's usually not that bad. So that's helped me to, to lean into those conversations a bit more even though I still feel uncomfortable. What do I struggle to talk about though? Um, for me, it's probably more around um, maybe things with my business. So for me, integrity and transparency is um, really, really important. And you know, sometimes business, certainly when you're an entrepreneur, is not easy. It's tough, it's hard, it's a grind. Sometimes it feels like you're in the bottom of a massive hole. Um, and so trying to be honest with my audience and my clients and customers and so on um, without looking like you know I can't service them. So 
maybe honesty and conversations in and around that. Mike, is there one thing you never talk about normally, but you're willing to talk about with us today? It's kind of a hard one because one of the big things for me is, I suppose, living my message. So I always want to be an example of what I'm talking about. Um, therefore, I do try and talk about mm -hmm. most things. But I suppose one thing perhaps that would be more um, yeah, deep within me would be, and I think this is probably um, common for a lot of guys, is especially getting into this space, right, uh, of talking about masculinity and, and all that kind of stuff, is that feeling of, is someone going to tap me on the shoulder and say, dude, who the fuck are you? And, you know, essentially being caught out as a fraud kind of thing. Like, what do you know? Who are you to talk about this kind of stuff? Um, so I suppose it's that element of self-doubt, which absolutely comes in from time to time, but more so specifically about that. Um, and then I suppose in alignment with that is, is more just that deep inner voice sometimes that's like, because I don't think for a second that I have all my shit sorted, not at all, but the voice is like, is there, is there going to be a point where all of a sudden there's just going to be this like big fucking meltdown or something? Because... Seem to be doing okay, and coaching people around on the staff. And I know I'm working through all my own shit and all that kind of stuff. But is that coming? And and it's like this weird, irrational conversation that I have with myself. But um, yeah, I don't really talk about that. So then today's all about conversations. What are like the bigger conversation that we're just not dealing with at the moment that we should be dealing with? For me, it's got to be the conversation of what is masculinity. So I can have my own ownership of that and I can coach a few people on it and all that kind of stuff. But on a big scale, every day there's a new generation of males coming through. And I think on a big scale, we are responsible for fucking up a load of shit that goes on in the world. And I think if we can start to reframe the path from boyhood into manhood and what it means to be a well-rounded, healthy, compassionate, strong empathetic, resilient man, um, we can have a huge impact on the day-to-day -day lives of many people around the world. What do you think, like, in this day and age as well, social media, online presence, obviously there's so many more conversations happening digital, digitally, so do you reckon this is changing the, the shape of, of men as well? Men and men, men culture, I suppose, is being created online as well, as opposed to now in the pub, as opposed to in the yeah. workplace and stuff like that. Do you find that it's, um, you know, like changing the culture a bit of, of what it means to be a man? Yeah, I think the culture is definitely changing, right? So, you know, on one hand, I kind of talk about there's all this kind of shit that we need to work on, but at the same time, there's heaps of work happening and it's great. There's heaps more diversity. There's so many more options for men to be themselves, which is amazing. Um, and we see that in social media and stuff, absolutely. One of the things I want to be aware of myself and perhaps encourage certainly the people I work with about around social media is, one, that we're not seeking external validation <clears throat> from that, and two, then just putting our highlights out there and you know the link there maybe of, of external validation. And of course, realising that other people are doing that and not to compare. Um, so I think that's just a, a dangerous space um, if that's, you know, the trap to fall into. Checking phone, oh, how many likes did I get? All that kind of stuff, right? Like, you validate you, not some people through an app. Um, but I think there's so much power in social media and, you know, our current day and age to be yourself and to express it, and that's amazing. So now you're in this space of obviously having conversations all the time, but is there one person in particular that you just love to sit down with and have a conversation with apart from Scott Tweedy. <laughs> Tick. Um, there is. So, well, absolutely, hundreds. I mean, shit, I could talk all day about the people I'd like to have conversations with, um, current and through history. But at the end of the day, for me, it would come down to um, one person, that's my mum. So my mum passed away about five, almost five years ago. And so that was a period where I was really starting to work on myself and, and start this journey, I suppose. Um, mum had been diagnosed with lung cancer four years prior so she'd been fighting through that and so that time for me really reinforced I suppose um, my value of health and how we must you know try to look after ourselves but also 
live our best lives and actually enjoy the time we have here. I saw mum, you know, kick ass in that four years kind of thing. Um, but I was just starting on that journey. I really was. Um, I'm engaged to my partner Nadia now. Mum never got to meet her. So mum hasn't had that. She never um, saw the stuff that I've done since that time, which is heaps of things, um, in the scale of perhaps, you know, old uni might. Um, so I'd love to sit down and just, one, catch up, have a conversation, talk to her about that stuff, and, yeah, have a, have a nice connection. Well, Mike Campbell, it has been an absolute pleasure to share conversations beyond the beers with you, Thanks, even though mate. we're having a beer. So thank you for opening up and sharing all that insight with me as well. Even though I spent 12 whole days riding on a bike in Cambodia with you, there's some stuff there I've never heard of, so that was fantastic. Cool. Mate, thank you for coming and putting me under the pump. And... Um, and listening and connecting, absolutely. That was awesome. And, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, that's our show for today. And if there's one thing I want to leave you guys with, it's make sure you share this with someone um, perhaps that could use it. And then actually go out into the world and start breaking the stereotype, having these kind of more meaningful conversations, and allowing yourself to ask for help if you need it. And also ask someone else if they need help. Talk to a mate and ask how he's really going and have those more meaningful conversations. Thanks for tuning in to this short version of the show. To watch the full interview, click on the link below and go to beyondthebears.tv. There you can sign in to watch the rest of the episodes for free as well as all the episodes of the show. Otherwise, make sure you share this episode with at least one man you think will enjoy or benefit from it. Now go out into your own life and start having these more meaningful conversations. Ask for help. Ask a mate how he's really doing. Or if he just wants to have a real conversation and go beyond the beers. <laughs>